Good morning. Just a quick word of introduction um, before we begin our service this morning. Obviously, we're beginning out here in the narthex for the Liturgy of the Palms. After the blessing of the palms, we'll process in, and you may return to your pews as you are comfortable. A quick reminder to all of our readers who are helping with the gospel today, please be sure to sit in one of the first pews so that your voice will be picked up by the microphone for people who are watching online. And please ask you to take a step to your left or right so the camera can... Perfect. <laughs> one more quick word. During the service, since today is Palm Sunday, our gospel is a little bit different. There will not be a procession in the midst of the congregation. Everybody should have yellow passion narratives. During the passion reading, you may remain seated until we get to the part where Jesus is brought to Golgotha, and I'll, stand, I'll ask everybody to stand at that point. So that being said, let us begin. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, immediately as you enter it, you find hide there a colt that has never been ridden, but tie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, but will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. But those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. He entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. He had looked around at everything as it was already late. He went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these branches be for us a sign of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may forever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask some folks to help pass them around. And we will all process in together with the processional hymn. That they get sprinkled all over. <laughs> That's okay. We begin with the processional hymn.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me a tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, awakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Who Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Today's reading is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. We will read the psalm in your service bulletin, whole verse by whole verse responsibly, the last verse all together. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my en enemies and from those who persecute me. In your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. Our second reading today is from the Philippians, chapter two, from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
You may be seated. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you, all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him were a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, 
You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I, don't know, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. The servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, <clears throat> This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. So Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed and spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Please stand. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Aloy, Aloy. Lima sabachthani, 
which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. Our Lord comes to us humbly, riding a donkey and proclaiming a message of peace. Let us pray, saying, Lord, hear our prayer, that Christians near hear and share the word of God as true disciples, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer, that all the ends of the earth receive the words of the King of peace, and we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> For Joe Biden, our president, Eric, our governor, Chris, our mayor, and for the city of Noblesville, and in our whatever cycle of prayer, Christ Church Cathedral, Indianapolis, the very Reverend Dr. Gray Le Lesney, the Reverend Jody Barron, the Reverend Hippolito Fernandez Riena, the Reverend Greg Baker, the Reverend Tom Ryder Reed, the Reverend Fatima Yakuba Matus, that all leaders of church and of state prefer humble service to empty power, we pray. For those serving in the military, Nam Cook, Caleb Garrett, Tommy Harris, Braden Harris, Ken Morrison, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those celebrating birthdays, Kelly Tabling, John Chaffin, Meredith Promozik, Grayson Meyer, and all those celebrating anniversaries this week. And for those who have asked for our prayers, Paige Sexton, Heather Duchess, Becky Seiler, Emily Baker, Ken Bush, Mike Byers, Lydia Wente, Mark Greiner, Pat Graham, Gabrielle Wright, Kristen Dakima, Lauren Sitter, we pray. For those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives, draw strength from the name above every other name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we hope to meet Jesus when he comes again and be ready for joyful and be joyful for the repose of the soul of Carl Carter, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of our creation, you show your sons and daughters the way to freedom through the gentle obedience of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant our petitions, our petitions as we seek to follow him. We pray in his name, Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. Um, I will be very brief with announcements this morning. Um, obviously, we have entered in the solemn and sacred time of Holy Week. 
Um, and as a continuation of Holy Week, we will have the Triduum services. So that's Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil on Saturday. All of the services will be taking at place at 7 o'clock here at St. Michael's. If you've never been to these services before, I highly encourage and recommend that you come. Monday, Thursday is the institution of the Holy Eucharist and the washing of the feet and the stripping of the altar. Good Friday is when we remember the crucifixion of Christ. It's very long time. And then the Easter Vigil begins at 7. It begins, it's a service that begins in darkness. And when we proclaim the resurrection of Christ our Lord, who has overcome death and all the lights come on, and we have a great and joyful noise celebrating Christ's return. We hope that you can join us for these services. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It's truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessings. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. Beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Join with them in giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing.
proclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal the wisdom of your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. The poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift, for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name, Remember, Lord, your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your cross. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and life. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours. Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed for you, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Mighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 